John, the prevailing view among philosophers and certainly most scientists is materialism, that only the physical is real. We can mm -hmm. study that. Maybe it's going to be a lot of fantastically interesting things, but basically there's one physical world. People who don't like that or who think it's wrong from either a religious point of view or a philosophical point of view point to consciousness as their single arrow that can kill materialism. Mm -hmm. You don't agree with that? Well, it depends, of course, as we like to say, on how you define these terms. <laughs> and if you define materialism as the view that matter exists in the sense that all of reality, all of material reality is all the reality there is, and it has only a third person or objective ontology where it's, it's equally accessible to any competent observer, mm -hmm. and consciousness is the view, the existence of consciousness uh, the, the, the proposition that consciousness exists is the view that consciousness has a first-person ontology that is not part of a third-person reality, then, of course, the existence of consciousness trivially would refute materialism. Ah, but that's, that's a trivial... That's right. But now we want to go, as in, always in philosophy, you want to get behind the surface issues and see what's actually at, yes. at, at stake here. And materialism is driven, uh, the, the intelligent materialism is driven by the conviction that the uh, account that we're getting of reality in subjects like physics and chemistry and molecular biology and evolutionary biology, that that uh, ultimately gives us an account of how the world works. And I think that's right. If that's materialism, then I'm a materialist. But I also think consciousness exists, and it has an irreducible subjective ontology. It only exists when it's experienced by a human or an animal subject, by, an, uh, by a conscious agent. But now, if you put those two together, then my task is to make the existence of consciousness in my sense, the real thing, not some ersatz or simulation, the real thing consistent with what we know about how the world works. I claim that can be done. So consciousness does not refute my version of materialism, <laughs> but it does refute certain traditional versions. What does that tell me? Let's get rid of this terminology of materialism and, and the, uh, uh, mentalism and so on and just describe the facts. I, I think in terms of the mind-body problem, that's right. But there's something much deeper at stake in these arguments because basically most religion is founded on the existence of two different kinds of worlds. Not mm -hmm. every religion, but, but most of the major religions. So there's a great deal at stake here. So I think we have to probe further and find out how consciousness deals with this concept of materialism because if consciousness doesn't refute the materialism that the only thing that exists is the physical world. If consciousness can't do that and materialism is real and is mm -hmm. only the physical world, that's a significant change in the, the way of thinking for most human beings. No, I think that's right. Now, and as, as you point out correctly, there is a, a big hidden agenda under discussion here. If you assume that God exists and that God has endowed each of us with an immortal soul, then materialism in any version, uh, mine or anybody else's version, is false. Uh, what I am trying to do is describe a version of what we know about the world from physics, chemistry, and all the other hard sciences, and why, even imagine these carried to the limit where we had a perfect knowledge, mm -hmm. how that is consistent with the existence of an irreducible qualitative subjective consciousness. I think I can do that. But, but you, you, I, you're certainly right to say, but that wouldn't satisfy people who believe this for some religious reasons, who want us to get an immortal soul. And I want to say, you don't get an immortal soul out of physics. <laughs> okay, there, there are some other kinds of dualistic views. Uh, I think we have some that are founded on a religious view, some that uh, take quantum mechanics and mm -hmm. show that you have to, ha and quantum mechanics would say that some would, the, the consciousness is important to make quantum mechanics work. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, others would point to some sort of panpsychism, that there's some proto-consciousness in almost everything. That's the only way to explain it. So the concept of, of, of consciousness uh, destroying the foundations of materialism co has a lot of different um, uh, tentacles. Well, I think you're absolutely right that, that um, uh, when, when we get onto this subject, uh, people tend to lose their normal caution. <laughs> uh, I think intellectually we ought to proceed one step at a time. Now, there's nothing in what we know about the universe that would lead me to think we have a good reason for believing in panpsychism, that consciousness is everywhere. 
and there's a real problem with panpsychism, and that is it, it doesn't give a coherent account of how consciousness comes to us in the units that it does come to us in. If you're going to say the thermostat is conscious, then what about each screw and each molecule in each screw? So a consciousness cannot be described as a kind of jam spread thinly over the whole universe because we know it comes in discrete units. Maybe with a split brain hypothesis, I have two consciousness, but you don't have an indefinite schmear of consciousness. That makes no sense. All right, so that's not a serious option. But now uh, another uh, option that uh, some people have adopted is the idea that in order to account for quantum mechanics, you've got to suppose that consciousness is a basic feature of the universe yeah. because it's what brings the collapse of the wave function. And I want to say just my experience has been whenever philosophers and indeed even some uh, physicists, when they talk about con uh, uh, quantum mechanics, that the the density of hot air tends to <laughs> increase exponentially, so I'm extremely careful about that. But nothing, it seems to me, that I know about quantum mechanics uh, would suggest that you can't make sense of the equations, you can't make sense of the experimental results unless you suppose that consciousness is sort of the basic building block of the universe. See, on my view, consciousness is a higher level feature of the brain caused by lower level brain processes. You can no more have it sort of uh, existing prior to the e existence of its neurobiological base, uh, then you could have any other higher level features such as digestion. Okay, what would seem to follow from what you're saying is that in some ultimate science we should be able to create consciousness. In principle, I see no obstacle. We're nowhere near being able sure, to do that. Sure. But imagine, look, we ought to hear the question, can you create consciousness artificially as like the question, can you create the pumping of blood that the heart does artificially? Now, we know the answer to the pumping of blood because we have artificial hearts. But to do that, we had to know how the brain did it. It wasn't discovered till the 17th century, by the way, that the, that the heart did function to pump blood. But now, if we knew exactly how, in detail, I mean really down to the finest detail, how the brain caused consciousness, then I don't see any obstacle in principle to building a conscious machine. You see, the thing you always remember is, the brain is a machine. It's a machine made out of, of uh, 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 organic uh, substance, out uh, big carbon-based molecules. It's not uh, like my car engine, but it is a machine. But there's nothing special about carbon. It could be made out of anything if, if, you, if, you, you, knew could. The, if you knew the principles. Sure. We don't know the principles. Hearts do not have to be made out of muscle tissues in order to pump blood. We don't know what you have to have to do it with with consciousness, but there's one mistake we got to avoid, and that is the mistake of supposing that if you simulate it, you've duplicated yes. it. And this is a deep mistake embedded in our popular culture, that simulation is equivalent to duplication, but of course it isn't. A perfect simulation of the brain, say on a computer, would no longer thereby be conscious than a perfect simulation of a rainstorm on a weather predicting computer will leave us all wet. <laughs> I mean, simulate, or if we, the fire department presumably does simulations of five alarm fires, but they don't burn the, uh, the firehouse down. <laughs> it's just a picture or a model or diagram. That's what the computer simulations are. So the simulation of, the, of consciousness is no more conscious thereby than the simulation of a rainstorm it will make us all wet. But in principle, in some ultimate science, consciousness with the, with the same first person experience of these qualia, this mm -hmm. what it feels like to see a pink shirt, that can all be created. Afresh. Absolutely, that is, if you uh, uh, if you adopt what I think is what we know about how the world works, we know that consciousness is caused by brain processes. If we knew in detail exactly how the brain does it, then we ought to be able to do it artificially.